on the field, and not only that, but battling our country, our neighborhood, I realize that there is a, an attack on the word of God. The devil is doing his best to attack the word of God and to make God less in any way. But I want to just brag a little bit about the word of God tonight. Uh, that Bible, Lester Roloff, a great man of God, my old school hero, uh, he says, don't mess with my mama, for she brought me into the family of God. And that's my hero. And, uh, and the word of God is what I rest my faith on. I did not read anything else. I did not read anything else. Uh, when I got saved, I was birthed by the word of God. I read the word of God. Yes, sir. And of course, uh, to make a long story short, um, I, I was given the word of God to, uh, to be read. And I, I read the word of God. It took me four months to read the Bible from Genesis down to Revelation. Yes, sir. Four months to read the Bible. And of course, I, be, I, I, I brought it back to my friend. And he said, I want you to read the Bible again. I wanted to read the New Testament. And I began to read the New Testament. Well, you know, the Bible, our King James Bible, uh, possess 1,189 chapters, right? Amen? Praise God. 66 books. 66 books, folks. Amen? 929 uh, in the Old and 260 uh, in the New Testament. Amen? That good old book, that good old book. And, of course, it contains uh, at least uh, 31,178 verses. Uh, I, love, I love that book. I love that book. I love that book. Amen. And if you really want to talk about words, basically, uh, it's approximately uh, 773,000. Yes, sir. S uh, amen. 692 words in the Bible. Amen. I mean, lots of words. Amen. But it's not until I read the book of Titus and I saw what God says in his word. Amen. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy he saved us by the washing and renewing and regeneration of the Holy Ghost. And that's how God spoke to my heart. That's how God gave me the word. And I remembered God saying, for by grace are we saved through faith. It's all because of the word. Right. All I had, all I had in my day, all I had was some beads. That's all I had as an altar boy. Some beads, basically. Um, and all we had was some, ca some candles uh, in our house. We never had the Bible. We never had the word of God. We never knew what the Bible was. Because we were warned, we were told, do not have anything to do with the Bible. I am the one. I am the one. The man that dressed like a woman and has no children. Um, uh, I, I am the one to tell you and to instruct you. Amen. You come, you confess to me. And he says, you confess to me. Then I take your sins and bring it to Mary. And Mary takes your sins and bring it to the Father. Not knowing that that good old book says that there is one mediator. Amen. One mediator amen. between God and man is the Christ Jesus. Amen. One. Amen. There is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Only through Jesus Christ. Amen. Not through a man. Not through a man. It's not through baptism. It's not getting baptized. No way. Amen. It's not joining a church. No way. Amen. It's not getting involved in all of the rituals and, and the traditions. But hey, it's receiving Jesus as your Savior. Amen. You must understand. Receiving Him. And when you receive Him, He takes your life and He blesses your life. Amen. And He gives you power and strength to live for Him. Amen. Right. Right. Praise God. I give my heart at age 13, praise the name of the Lord. Now I am 66 years of age. 66. On the 12th of next month, August, I'm going to be 67. Amen. And I want to go more. Amen. amen. I want to go for another 67. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. As long as God gives me the strength and the life, I want to continue uh, to serve him here and below. You see, when, when the Lord says, let there be light. Amen. I was the one that turned on the switch. Amen. 
All right. I want to share with you this day from the Word of God. Psalm chapter 12. The book of Psalm. Psalm chapter 12. I want to share with you. And I want to just brag. And I'm so glad to see um, right in the back here we have only 1611. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Using preaching and teaching. Amen. Listen, folks. Let me say to you. The churches are getting weak. The churches are getting confused. In the Caribbean, I do not know about up here, but in the Caribbean, it seems as if the older people get is the less they believe in that good book. It seems as if the more they lean toward intellectualism, the more they turn into our modernistic principles and philosophies is the more they get less conviction in regards to the word of God. You're right. And it's becoming dangerous. Yeah. It's becoming dangerous. But I want to let you know here, folks, that as long as God gives me the strength and the power and the grace to stand up, I want to be true to his word. Amen. This is not an option. This is not an option. Right. This is not no option, man. Right. This Thus saith the Lord. Right. The Lord says it, and we have to stick with it. Even though we might not believe it, but we have to stand on it. Yeah. In Psalm chapter 12, and verses 6 and 7, the scripture says, The words of the Lord, now note that, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from generation, from this generation, sorry, and forever. Amen. Father, we ask you bless the time that we have this evening through your word Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I want us to hear, if you were to ask the average professing Christian what he believes about the inerrancy of the Bible, you would hear many of them say, well, it came from God. They would say that, came from God. Then some of them would say, oh, man wrote it. Amen. As the Rastafarians in my country would say, hey, it's the white man that wrote the Bible. Hey, the white man that wrote the Bible. I said, well, I, I, I said, well you know what? We have to compliment the white man. Because as a black man, for what I see in the scriptures... I would not write that about me as a black man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Huh? Right. Jeremiah 79 says, The heart of man is deceitful above all and desperately wicked. Right. I'm, not I'm not going to write that. No. Now I'm going to write the heart of a black man is not, deceit not deceitful, but it's wonderful. <laughs> I would write that. So I said, guys, you all guys are just coming up with philosophies that you do not know about. Right. So let's give the white man some genuineness. Let's, tell, let's say they are very good because what they wrote, they're genuine about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey. So then some of them would say, hey. Some of them say, well, traditions is all the same. Then they say, well, it's, it's easier to understand. They don't believe they have that we have the perfect word. If you ask many of the so-called believer, the Bible scholars, listen, they would say it was inspired in the original writing. Yeah. They say there, they admit that no one has them today. We do not have them. We agree they were inspired. No one has them today. Where are they? We usually ask them, where are they? Now, some of them said uh, some things like that. Hey, you know what, preacher? God at least made some mystics. And there are mystics in the Bible. There are some mystics in the Bible and there are errors in the scriptures. Some of them would go ahead and say that. But I said here, the reason why they would believe that, as I submit to you tonight, that God has preserved his word. God has preserved his word. 
And God is not making any mistakes to say, well, look, he's going to put some of his word in the Quran, and he's going to put some of his word in the doctrines and covenants of the Book of Mormon, uh, or put his word basically with Ellen G. White, amen, or put his word with, uh, with the New World Translation and say, hey, Sang Wang Moon, and so forth. God is not stupid. God wrote one Bible. Amen. He wrote one Bible. Yes, sir. God doesn't have to make up his mind. We have to make up our minds in concerning what we believe. But God wrote one Bible and he knew what he wrote. Amen. Right. Amen. He made it quite clear. And I submit to you 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. The scripture says all scripture yeah. is given by the inspiration of God. Yeah. So to understand preservation, we must understand inspiration. Yeah. God inspired his word. Amen. He inspired his word. And that's what the scripture says. Uh, inspiration simply means God breathed. Amen. Right. And first time we see God breathed into the nostrils and man became a living soul. By the way, man, when God created man, he breathed into his nostril and man became a living soul. Amen. And out of man came the woman. But I want you to also note that God made male and female. Amen. So if you cannot determine who you are, something definitely wrong with you. Then the scripture tells us, brethren, every word of God is quick. The word of God is quick and powerful. Very powerful. In 2 Peter chapter 1. And verse 21, the scripture says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right. Holy men of God, they spoke the word of God as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So every word of God is pure. Right, right. There is no admixture. Right. There is no mixing up. Right. Amen. Right. Praise God. There is none of that. We have a sugarcane um, uh, guy in Grenada. Uh, he grinds the cane, he presses it, and then he puts it in a cup. But what he does, he gets honey, and he mixes the honey, and while he puts it in the cup, he puts some honey, and he calls it pure sugarcane. No, no, that's not pure sugarcane. No, that's contaminated sugarcane. Yeah. And I almost tell him, I said, you're lying to us. This is not pure. Amen. I know what is sugar cane. I grew up around sugar cane. I grew up going cutting sugar cane in my father's land. I grew up breaking it on my knees. Amen. I grew up holding it, not peeling it, but holding it with my teeth and peel it down. Amen. And then grind it up. Amen. Grind it up. And the result, I tell you what, it keeps your teeth clean and white. Amen. Oh yes. That's the pure stuff you get. That's the pure stuff you get. Look at verse 6. The scripture says here, the word of the Lord are pure words. I want you to know that. Pure words. Some believe it only contains the word of God. Some think only what God said is inspired. Some think the reminder is, and tells us it is man words. But pure here, it simply means without contamination. Not mixed. It doesn't just contain the word of God. It is the word of God. It shows us the word of God. It is the word of God. How do we know that? The scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 to 6. Every word of God is pure. Amen. He is a shield unto them that put the trust in him. I doubt not unto his words, lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not add, do not take away from the word of God. Because the word of God brings it out and tells us exactly as it is. The word of God is pure. It is God's word. Then not only that, but the word of God must be received as the word of God. Yes. It must be received as the word of God. 
The scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you have heard of us, you receive it not as the word of men, but as in truth, the word of God. You receive the word of God. Folks, we got to receive the word of God. When your pastor preaches the word of God to you, you got to receive it as the, the word of God. Amen. Amen. It's not his words. Amen. He's not telling you a lie. He's telling you the truth. Amen. Amen. He's bringing the truth to you. So therefore, you got to open your heart and receive the word by faith. Amen. Amen. And begin to live the word of God by faith. And that's what God wants for us. Amen. Now, every word of God is not only pure, but every word of God is perfect. Right. Perfect. It's perfect. In Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7, in Psalm 19, 7, this says, the law of the Lord is perfect. Hallelujah. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is show, making wise the simple. Right. It's perfect. It's pure. It's clean. Perfect, that means without error. That means it's complete. Amen. There's no fault in it. There is no faultiness in it. It's clean. It's pure. The word of God. You know what keeps me as a missionary on the field and as a pastor on the field? The fact is here. I can go down the road and I could hold the word of God and say, Thus said the Lord, God says, this is what he wants you to do. Repent. Amen. I could hold the word of God and say, this is the word of God. You know, but a lot of people are afraid to hold the word of God. They would hold other books in their hand. Yeah. They would hold a magazine. They would hold Dennis Robbins. Yeah. 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 They would hold probably Enid Blyton. Amen. They would hold other, uh, other, other novels in their hand. But hey, to hold the word of God, some of them are afraid to hold the word of God. And that's what's happening during the revolution time in my country. Some people were afraid to walk the street with the word of God. And not only that, but they were afraid to stand up on, on the street and speak about the word of God. Let me say to you, it was becoming so dangerous that it seems as if all the churches in Grenada. Nobody wants to talk about the word of God. Nobody wants to hold the word of God and come out and say, hey, this is the word of God. This is what God says. Thus said the Lord. Amen. Thus said the Lord. Everybody was a little bit frightened. And in fact, I myself was a little bit frightened, folks. Amen. It's like, it's, it's like I was just like Jeremiah. Shut up. Amen. Not saying anything. Not saying anything. But the word of God was in my bones, man. It's like a fire. Amen. And man, I was uneasy. I, could, I couldn't settle. <laughs> I got to do something. I got to get up and do something. And so I, I, I get a couple guys. And I said, we used to preach in Granville. We used to preach in Granville in the early days. And my wife now, who is, who is now my wife, basically, um, she used to be coming around because I knew her a long time. Amen. And, and so she used to be coming around. And, and we were preaching in Granville, in the marketplace. We're preaching. We get the word of God and we preach the word of God. Amen. We preach the word of God. I have had men uh, in the revolution with the AK-47 will come up and come to us and say, Hey, if you, if, if you continue this nonsense about Jesus, amen. Man, I'll just, I'll just empty this gun in you. But who is more powerful? Jesus says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They could kill the body, but they cannot kill the word. They could kill the body, but they cannot kill Jesus. Amen. They thought, the devil thought that he killed Jesus when he was crucified on the cross. He thought that Jesus, aha, once and for all, we got you, amen. We got you, amen. We put you there in the tomb. You stay there. You're not coming out, amen. In fact, they roll big stones behind those, uh, that tomb, amen. But hey, third day, amen. Right Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. The grave couldn't hold him down. Right, right. Nothing could hold him down. Yeah. Not even death is able to hold him down. Right. He rose triumphantly. From the grave. Amen. Hallelujah. And now he's sitting in the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you and for me. Amen. Amen. He is. Amen. He is the one. Right. 
that gives that power and gives that strength. And so therefore, we must not be ashamed and we must not be afraid. Amen. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 15, So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel. I am ready. There are lots of people, they're ready to do everything else. Huh? They're ready to go to shop. 24-7 in Walmart. They're ready to go do this. They're ready to go to the sporting arena. They're ready to do everything else. But they're not ready to go soul winning. They're not ready to go read the Bible for somebody else. They're not ready to go give out a track. Amen. They're not ready to do something uh, for the Lord. Uh, they, they always want to do their own thing. Amen. But hey, we as God's children, we must be always ready. Amen. We must be ready. Must be ready. Because the word of God is always ready. Every word of God is perfect. The scripture says. And what perfect means, it means, it means without error is complete. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 goes on to say that scripture is profitable for doctrine. And we must never get away from that. For doctrine. For doctrine. You see, doctrine tells us what is right. right. Amen. You see, a lot of people want to throw that away. They do not want to have anything to do. Those mega churches, they do not want to have anything with doctrine. Right. They, I mean, they, they, they run from that. Hey, let's forget doctrine and let's do this and let's do that. But doctrine tells us what is right. And not only that, for doctrine, amen, but for reproof. Right. Reproof tells us what is not right. You do not have to go to the pastor and say, Pastor, is this right? Hey, Read the Bible. The Bible tells you what is right and what is wrong. Amen. You know what is wrong. You know what is right. Every one of us knows what is wrong and what is right. It's for reproof. It, it corrects us. It rebukes us. And when you get rebuked from the pulpit, don't think that the pastor is the one that's throwing the words at you. Amen. As we say in Grenada, if the gravel fall in your rice, Think about it. Go sit in a corner. Pull out the rice. Amen. And repent. Amen. 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 And that's important. Very necessary. So doctrine for reproof. Not only that. For correction. Doctrine corrects us when we go wrong. The word of God corrects us when we go wrong. When you go wrong, it corrects us. Right teenagers? Your parents correct you when you go wrong. Don't you think that you're not your own man. You're not your own woman. Amen. You're living under their roof. Amen. Hallelujah. So when they correct you, you have to listen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do I hear amen, teenagers? Amen. You got to listen. Yeah. When they tell you what to do. Amen. You cannot shrug your shoulders or spew your lips and so forth. No. No, 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 no. We say, no, that is not right. That is not right. When they tell you, throw the trash. Go throw the trash. But you know, these days, young people, they don't want to listen. They don't want to hear. Amen. They on the phone. Man, I tell you, 24-7. They're on the phone. And they're there. And mommy calls out, or daddy calls out. Jonathan, go throw out the trash. Yeah, yeah, all right, okay. And they're there. Jonathan, go throw out the trash. Yeah, okay. I'm coming. Jonathan, go throw out the trash. Oh, and then that's when they understand what really going ahead with them. Amen. And they just get up and they run. Hey, you have to listen the first call. Amen. You have to listen the first call. You have to be ready to do what is necessary. You have to be ready to love your parents and follow them. Follow their advice. Amen. They're not going to tell you wrong. Amen. They're not going to lead you wrong. They're going to tell you what is right. Amen. Don't you ever think that you are a woman or a man. If you are a woman and a man or a man and living in your parents' home, well, you know, what is a man and what is a woman? Well, a man, when you become a man, you turn your own keys. Then you put food on your own table. Put food on your own table. You don't break rules when you're under the roof. Amen? Right. You obey rules. <laughs> you know what I mean, teenagers? You obey rules. Yeah, good. That's important. Yeah. Remember that. 
They're the ones that are over you. And that's why you got to obey them as you can. Whether you live with your grandfather or whosoever you live with, you got to be obedient. You got to follow what the word says. Amen. You have to follow what God says through his word. Amen. And that's important. If you really want to be corrected, you have to at least listen what God says. And when you follow that, you are going to be in a wonderful position. Not only for correction, but for instruction. The word of God instructs us and tells us what to do. The word of God instructs me. The word of God instructs you. The word of God will tell you exactly what to do. Amen. In any situation. You first of all, you go to the word. When you are, um, when you are embraced with difficult situation, the first thing you must do is to embrace the word of God. Right. Embrace God. And then the second thing you must do is go to your pastor and, and, and ask him his ideas about certain things. He's going to instruct you. He's going to let you know what is what. He's going to make sure that he tells you the truth. And then it says for, for instruction in righteousness. He will tell you exactly what to do. It is the corrector. The word of God is the corrector. It corrects you. When I go wrong, the word of God corrects me. Right. When you go wrong, the word of God ought to correct you. Yeah. Because you're in the word of God. Because the word of God is divinely inspired and preserved. Every word of God, every word of God is necessary. I'll give you about three more points and we're going to close. Every word of God is necessary. Yeah. Every word of God is necessary. Job said, and I love Job. That great man, he says there, I think in chapter 23 and verse 12, Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips, for I esteem the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Amen. I am certain that many of us eat more than one time today. Yeah. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're going to eat after again. Amen. Yeah. And before we go to bed, we're going to eat again. And when we go to bed, we're going to wake up and we're going to eat again. Is that right? We're going to eat. We eat. Job says, the word of God was more than his necessary food. He embraced the word of God. He loved the word of God. He follows the word of God. The word of God is necessary for salvation. A person gets saved through the word of God. You can't get saved through some kind of outdated thing. You're not going to get saved by joining the church. You're not going to get saved basically by putting your name on the roll. No. But it is necessary. It's impossible to be saved apart from the word of God. It's impossible to be saved apart from the word of God. You cannot be saved from reading a Christian book. You are going to be instructed, but that cannot save you. It's only the word of God to save you. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing. And as you read the word of God, hey, you get faith to believe in Jesus. You get faith to follow Jesus. You get faith to get salvation. You get faith. And not only that, the word, the word of God is necessary for our Christian growth. Yeah. How are you going to grow if you don't read the word? If you don't study the word of God? You cannot grow. You know the reason why a lot of Christians hook up in church for years and years and up to now they cannot even lead a soul to Jesus. Yeah. They cannot even teach a Sunday school class. Yeah. Because of the fact, folks, they're not growing in Christ. They're not reading and studying the word of God so they could grow in Christ so they could help somebody. Right. They could help the man on the street. They could help their neighbors. They could help their friends. They, 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 they're not involved in doing this. Right. So God says in 2 Peter 1.3 According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. He calls us to glory and virtue. Then in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, For if these things be in you, if these things be in you, 
and abound in you, they make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Blind. And cannot see afar off. And hath forgotten that he has purged. He was purged from his all sins. He forget that. That he was purged. You'll never be able to live for God without the word of God. You cannot. I have learned that in my years of serving Christ. Since I received it. You cannot live without the word of God. There is no way you could live without the word of God. The word of God is necessary, lastly, to fight the devil. The word of God is necessary to fight the devil. Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. Not just some. Amen. And I want you to notice here that the armor that God asks us to put on doesn't back up or doesn't protect the back. It protects the front. Amen. Hallelujah. The shield of faith. In fact, the helmet of salvation. Our lines got about with truth. Amen. The breastplate of righteousness. I mean, name them. Yes, sir. The shield of faith. The sword of the spirit. Our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You know what that tells us? That tells us that some fighting would have to take place. Right. And that fighting would not be you running away from the devil. Right. That fighting is you chasing the devil in Jesus' name. You chasing the devil. Amen. You chasing the devil. Don't say the Lord. Amen. Satan, in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Amen. Thou shall not tempt the Son of God. Amen. Thou shall not tempt me. Don't bring those thoughts in my mind. Don't bring those fleshly thoughts in my mind. I want you to know, in the name of Jesus, I have the mind of Christ. I have Jesus living in me. He is living in me. And so, therefore, Satan, you can't prevail. You can't prevail. So, the fact is here. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6, 17 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. Folks, let me say this. The word, the devil will try everything on you. And the devil will try to do everything on you. As I conclude, I want to let you know here that, listen, Guard your heart. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Yeah. For out of it are the issues of life. Yeah. That's where the devil aim. Young people, the devil aim at your heart. Amen. Right. He tries to mess up your mind. And try to make you do things and, and think things that, that are, not, uh, are not good for your health. Not good for your spiritual growth. So you've got to watch out for him. And that's why as I close, the good man, Solomon, uh, the wise man says, My son, forget not my law. Proverbs chapter 3. Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and of long life and peace shall they add to thee. He says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. And write them upon the table of thine heart. He says, so shall thou find favor and understanding in the sight of God and man. Yes, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Not only that, but he said in Psalm 119 verse 9, young men, young ladies, you know, you want to have your way cleansed? You know what the Bible says? Where it all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Amen. Verse 11 says, Thy word, thy word, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. When you hide the word of God in your heart, you've got the power and, 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 and the vitality to fight the devil in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. When you hide the word of God, you're able to court the word of God to that old devil that will bring up all of these things Good. against you. So stay with the preserved word of God. Stay with the inspired word of God. It is power enough to give you the victory 
in Jesus Christ. I love you, folks. You take care. God bless. Let's pray. Father, thank you for who you are. And we ask your blessing uh, tonight. If there is one that is not saved, that it will come to know Jesus tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen preacher. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.